What's going on fam? Welcome back to the channel. This is another game analysis video for you guys today. It is the second game under the name Salt City Union. Again, we're the same club, but just so you guys keep in mind when there are highlights and there is that little banner that says the score up at the top, we are Salt City Union, not San Diego Albion. So without further ado guys, let's just hop straight into the analysis. So we are going to press play and we are going from right to left in the white and San Diego Albion is in the blue. So big ball comes over the top from the goalkeeper, a little bit shanked there, um, and our six gets it out of play. So if my first touch of the game is a throw-in into our midfielder running on, unfortunate touch out of bounds, no worries there. Ball comes over from the center back, and then I'm just playing it into the line, and then unfortunately lose possession here, but again, just trying to make sure that uh, we counter press straight away. Little Meg there, unfortunately. All right, I'm going to pause right there. Okay, so I'm going to replay this as I'm talking really quick. Uh, he, Their winger megged me, and he tripped over nothing. If you watch the replay, I'll zoom in, and you guys can see he literally just falls down. As soon as I put my hand, he doesn't get past me. It's either the, you've, you've, I'm sure you've heard the motto, either the man or the ball, or the woman and the ball, whatever. And uh, yeah, he just tripped over nothing. So unfortunately, get the foul called, and that is what it is three minutes into the game, but such is life. All right, so we'll play. Calls the foul. Next touch of the game. Uh, pretty poor for me, honestly. I try to take it out of bounds, but just a fat touch out for a corner kick. That was really poor. I should have just first timed. Um, next one, get it, play our center back. Little combos here. And we get out from our six, opposite side center back, and just playing a little bit, trying to keep the ball. Drive forward, play into our center mid, who does a great job of turning and getting out of pressure. Next one here, just winning it back from the center back, and then a first touch into our winger over that winger's head. Gets the ball. So again, just trying to keep possession here, turning, playing our other center mid, who's popped out wide, getting the ball. Lots of early touches on the ball, to be fair, trying to just keep possession, make sure that we're um, just keeping them in a mid block, essentially. Next one is a throw in. This one, I don't think reaches is it tended target. Nope, unfortunately not, um, but we're able to win possession back there. Okay, so just a header forward, winning that over the winger, making sure that I'm dropping back. All right, I'm gonna pause really quick. Okay, so one of the things that's really important, so that was a great example of you can't see it because the camera's panning, but essentially what happens is when the winger is running in behind the back side of me, I'm facing sideways almost out of bounds so that I can see where the ball is in front of me and I can see where the winger is. So as soon as he starts to make his run, in behind me or tries to make his run in behind me, I'm dropping straight away. I'm not worried about an offsides trap. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm just making sure that I can cover that to get that header so that he's not running in behind me onto goal. So that's something that's really important as an outside back. Always make sure, fair enough, if your coach wants to play an offsides trap, um, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But in this case, I just decided not to because our line was kind of um, just not all over the place, but there were guys that were not in line with each other. So I just said, screw it. We're, I'm just going to take control of this situation, drop off, get that header. Um, one of the things that's really important in those situations is if you have a coach who wants to play a super high line, you kind of have to be in that mindset of like, okay, I'm going to wait high, and but my body position is going to be leaning back to cover that because if he is on sides, if that player does end up getting an on sides run, you have to torch back. So that's why it's always a gamble playing a high off sides line, but it's all at the end of the day, it's up to you guys as, as the coaches and as the players. So ju that's just something to keep in mind, especially as an outside back, but body position really helps in those types of situations. So play. Next is a throw in, just back to our center back. Nothing crazy there. Next play is a corner kick, put it into a really good area right on the top of the six. Almost gets into our um, center back, but bummer, oh well. Win the duel there, just try to keep it out of bounds. Um, and then our center back does a good job clearing. Little throw in here, back to the center back, wide open, or actually center mid, and we move the ball sideways, which is great. Ball comes up, that I should have just gone up for. I thought it, the ref called it away uh, against me, which was not the right call, I don't think. I didn't touch it, so oh well. See the guy dropping off, center forward, north center back, and then I don't know what that black is. Um, all right, little header out. This is their first goal. So 
I'm gonna pause as soon as he starts his run. So right there, okay. So that is a situation where if you watch our center mid, he does a great job of tracking, but that's on me as soon as our number 23, and if I see out of the corner of my eye, I watch our number 23 come to cover that guy who's gonna overlap. It's really important that I tell him to go ball because I'm closer to the runner and I go with the runner. In this case, you'll see in a second. Um, again, it was sort of, it was one of those things where I think maybe it's a mistake from the goalkeeper not catching it. Maybe it's a mistake from, you know, me not being able to read that quick enough. But in this sort of situation, I go with the runner who's overlapping and our center mid takes the ball man. Does that make sense? So we don't ever overlap as defenders. We just shift over and I follow the guy overlapping. So you'll watch what happens. And I'm a little bit late to catch his run and I should have just gone with him um, and then left the cover to our open center mid uh, or the, excuse me, the center mid that's coming with him and then also the center back who can step out. So we'll play and you'll watch. I'm just a half a second late, gets a cross off, really Probably keeper should have gotten there, but um, that's also on me. So I'll take responsibility for that one as well. But just a uh, good follow-up by the, by the center forward, but um, it is what it is. Next, just keeping possession over to the center back. And uh, maybe, maybe I wasn't in the right position there, but uh, yeah. Ball goes out of play there, but just making sure I cover that guy. Little throw in. Again, just not hitting that mark, not hitting that man. Um, all right, next play, bounce it into our center mid. He's able to turn. I don't, these, uh, I think the camera was all screwed up on this one. I don't know what was going on there. All right, ball back to the center back. No worries there. Win the header, hopefully. Thank you. <laughs> Watching back. Uh, one second, pause. Okay, one of the things that is sometimes frustrating and also motivating is watching back film, especially games that you uh, either you play well and not so well in certain moments, so you're not as consistent as you want to be, or you make mistakes and all that stuff. It's always it's humbling when you watch game film back, and unless you're you take absolutely every touch perfectly, which in my opinion, there's only been one or two situations in football ever that I've ever seen one player do something perfect the entire game. But for most of us, it really sucks sometimes to watch film back and be like, wow, like I played well in certain moments, I played really well in certain moments of this game, especially later on, um, and, and totally fine in some moments as well, like great. Uh, but for me, as somebody who's always trying to push to that next level, push to, you know, either push for our team to be the best it can be, or personally push to the highest level possible in football I, I can, it is frustrating having that mindset and then watching film back and being like, there's so much more that I want to be able to do. And so moving forward from this game, I think it's really important for me to make sure that I am absolutely impacting the game and impacting my team as best as humanly possible. So that's constantly something that's going through my brain is that maximize impact as opposed to a lot of people's mindset and mine in, in some in some ways as well, which is always minimizing mistakes because you don't want to screw up, you don't want to screw up, but that keeps you from maximizing your impact during a game. So that's just a short rant. Thank you for listening. Appreciate you. All right, and we'll play. Throw in here again. Nothing forward, so again, back to the center back, but uh, yeah. All right, next one, get it from the center back, turn, play forward. Ah, see, again, I want to play forward. I'm sitting here like telling you guys I'm going to play forward, and then I don't, and it's frustrating. Beautiful clip ball over the top. That was a brilliant run by our winger. Ball goes in, good clearance by the center back, but uh, yeah, that, that was great. Great run. Foul there, throw into feet, good job by our center mid. Play it there. We probably could have served that ball in, but say lovey. All right, now we're in the second half. So first touch of the second half is just a 1v1 defending there. Next one, little free kick. Back to the goalkeeper. Again, not a ton of options moving forward, which is a bummer. Um, this one, I just, I think I played that one literally out of bounds. That's so annoying. All right, so we're gonna pause. Okay, really quick. So we're gonna go back to what I said before. One of the things that is doesn't affect me in a negative way, and this is a this is a genuine just like conversation with you guys. 
there are very few of you who do this, but there are people who in the comment section will say, oh, they're not pro, oh, oh, they're not whatever. You may have parents like this, you may have friends like this who say, oh, like you think you're so good, you think you're whatever, like how do you play at such and such level, you're not that good, blah, blah, blah. I get that at a mass scale because of the YouTube platform. And I know guys like Matt Sheldon get it. I know guys like 7MLC sometimes get it. And it's funny because I think every player experiences this type of behavior or comments from people. Negative comments can come from anywhere. Negative comments can come from all over the place. And when you have those, it's sometimes it takes practice to get to the point where you don't internalize them. And that's one of the things that is so important and it's a very important piece of sports psychology is getting it into your head of not internalizing negative. If there's, you can reflect on the negative. If I see a negative comment about something from a game analysis, of course, I'm the first one. I'm the first one to critique my play. That's what I'm, I'm doing it in front of you guys. And also I would encourage you similar, I'll just use myself as an example, I may go through those comment sections as I'm replying to everybody, and if I see a negative comment, I might say, hmm, is there truth to that? Capital T truth. Like, objectively, did I do something wrong, or is there something I could have done better? Okay, no, not in that case. Fair enough. Or if they're just trash-talking the league or trash-talking my play in general, usually those are the types of people who don't have the ability to play at a professional level or the ability to play at a higher level where they're at now, which is probably re just recreational soccer. And that's fair enough. That's not a, that's not a knock on them. It's simply that those are the type you, you're never going to get criticism from people who are in a league above you. You're never, you know, you're never going to get credit because people above you are worried about getting to their next level. And that's how usually I think life works in that way. So for, for me, the, the biggest thing that you guys can do is you guys can say whether that criticism comes from parents, yourself, whether it comes from coaches, you can say, hey, is there merit to that? Is there truth to that? And if there is, take it on board, internalize it and say, okay, how can I, what's the action items that I can do to get better and get into a better circumstance in the next game, in the next training session, in the next play? It's not, you're not focused on hey, if I don't play so well and I lose my spot or I don't play as well in training so I'm not gonna play in the game, I don't want you to worry about that because those are outcomes. What is the process that you can go through when negative comments come in? What's your process for internalizing those and saying, okay, yep, there's merit to some of them. Okay, take those on board. Those are things that I agree with, I could do better at. Okay, I'll take those and I'll action item those. And then on the ones that are just kind of BS, like back of the head, people saying, oh, you're bad, you're this, you're whatever. Like those people don't matter. Those people really don't matter. The opinion of one person, the opinion of 300 people, the opinion of a thousand people. If a thousand people commented on this video and said that I played like crap, I'd be like, okay, that makes no difference in my process. That makes no difference in the way that I live my life. So who cares, right? You gotta focus on you and you gotta focus on your process. Rant over, here we go. And we'll play. Whew, that was a long one. All right, throw in, uh, this is gonna be a little sequence here. Little throw in there, ball back, ball back to the keeper. Uh, oh, this is their second goal actually. Yeah, so this is just a mistake from the goalkeeper unfortunately, but uh, yeah, yeah. Bummer. Okay, goal two. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, this was a rough game. Okay, so let's see. Ball into me, ball over the top, and we move forward. Come on, camera pan. Well, we don't see what happens. I think it went out for a throw in, so that's all right. Dribble up, little play into our center forward, or who midfielder who gets bodied off, unfortunately, and then just try to counter press as best we can. Header forward and uh, they win possession back. All right, little clearance off the back post. That's great positioning there um, from an outside back. Just gotta make sure you tuck in. And then this is just a run in behind. Our winger gets uh, tough and then I play the ball in and around. Outside back comes out and hits it out of bounds. So good play there. Just making sure I overlap as well. All right, so I'm gonna pause super fast. Um, super quick pointer on that one. Win the ball out, winger gets it, wins possession. My first thought is look back Okay, numbers are good, I can go. And then outside backs, your responsibility, you gotta bomb forward because you gotta be helping in the counterattack as well. 
certain circumstances will say, you know, again, if the numbers are not good, stay back, obviously, defense first. But if the numbers are good and you see maybe a midfielder or two midfielders who aren't running forward because they're either tired or whatever, whatever the circumstance is, but they're in a defensive position, that's fine because they can hold. And then if you have the energy, go, 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 go. Really important. All right, play. Good defending there. All right, next play. Gets caught under my feet a little bit, a little sticky, but managed to get it into our midfielder who does great there. All right, play it out. Ball over to the center forward. That goes out for a throw in um, for us. There's that throw. And then really good job. Um, oh, never mind. Not the play I was thinking about. Never mind. All right, defensive header winner there. No worries. And then our midfielder gets it. This is just shielding, 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 getting physical with that guy. No issues there. Our center back comes over and is like, you're nothing, you're nothing, blah, blah, blah. He said something there. All right, really great play here. Win that header over the guy. Flick it. Play a 1-2 here. Almost get that ball. And then probably should get a little set there. But uh, decent. Eh, not, not that great of a cross, unfortunately. But that's all right. All right, next play comes out to me and the volley. Oof, I hit side netting there, like hit the post and it went out for side netting. That was a very good shot. So we'll watch the replay really quick. Um, maybe I'll slow the original clip down because this clip isn't very good, uh, but that's okay. All right, next little play here. Great job by our winger, gets the ball out to me. Uh, all right, first cross, gotta, gotta get it around that guy, center back or outside back, whoever that was, does actually a pretty good job of getting there. Um, and then same idea here, just got to beat that first man where we have a 2v3. Poor numbers, unfortunately, on our end, but that's just the way it is late in the game. Um, they're 2-0 up, 65 minutes in, you know, one of those things. But service is something I'm working on quite a bit. All right, great ball in, right on the PK spot. Goalkeeper is aggressive. He comes out. Not much you can say about that one, but good ball anyway, good service. You can see me pointing back post. And then great ball in, and we almost score on that one. That probably should have been a little more flick. But, uh, yeah. Little hold-up play. Ball comes in. No worries there. This, all right, I'm going to pause. Okay, so this is a situation where I just need to be even closer to the guy so I can either body him or step in. Um, he does get the cross off. He hesitates a few times, gets me off balance, and then he goes. Um, this is just a situation where either I slide in at the last minute or it's a situation where I need to be closer to him so I can body him physical. And then if he tries to get around me, it's he's not going anywhere. That's kind of the mentality that I'm that I that I have that I want to have, uh, and that's really really important, especially for one v one defending. All right, so play. So you see, he hesitates and then accelerates again. That I just need to slide in there, and if it goes out for a corner, fair enough. Um, but then there's no cross. Is not dangerous. All right. Little win there, play it to the center mid, no issues. Uh, ball comes out to me, not really many options going forward, so gonna play it back and then ball into me again, play it out to our winger and then an overlap run, he's gonna come inside, cuts in, oh, not the same play, Never mind. Uh, little 2v2 here, they're gonna try to waste time, 90th minute, we get it out for a throw in and then I'm just gonna let it play. We only got a few more plays left, so no worries there. Let's see. Long throw into our center, center forward actually there. Um, and then two little plays here just to pass. And then next touch crosses comes in, just miss touch that. And then they clear last play of the game for me uh, was a pretty good one in my opinion. Um, great run. So as he turns, watch my run in behind, boom and then cut the guy, little cross, play there. All right, so that's the clip done. Okay, so as the clip's done, we're gonna play that again in slow motion. And what I want you guys to notice is as I watch that the outside back is following me because I'm further forward than our winger and their winger is now with our winger, you know, hopefully that makes sense. You guys will see it on film. Watch what happens as soon as I see our winger turn the guy and there's a hole in between where their player is and where the guy thinks he's marking me. I dart in behind and angle my run inside and then skirt behind him. 
And those are the types of really intelligent runs that are super important for wingers especially, but also for outside backs if you're gonna come from the wide areas to come in. So those are very important runs. Really understanding the timing of all that stuff is super important. So I'll play it one more time in slow motion. And obviously the finishing product was there. We just didn't get a finish on it. Uh, it was a good cutback, beat the guy, and then was able to serve the ball into the right space. Could have had a, a finish there, but unfortunately it is what it is. I'm, I'm putting myself in the right places. Um, but that it, the run is what I want you guys to notice there. And those are sort of the ideas that I want you guys to start thinking about as players who are looking to improve off ball movement. That stuff is so important. Those intelligent runs where you say, okay, I, the defender that's defending me is watching the ball, not me. And his body position sucks. So I'm going to get in behind him and then he's left going holy crap, where'd the guy go, right? So there you go. That is it for the game analysis. Again, unfortunate result away from home. I think this is a game. This was one of the, the I think the most rough games from just everybody individually wasn't quite there. We had a really, really long travel day the day before. It was like 18 hours of travel. That's no excuse. And also it does affect the body. So you think about the difficulty playing in a country like the US versus playing in a country like England or Spain where the country is small enough that you can travel in less than five hours pretty much anywhere. So that's for me, it's uh, it's just one of, the, one of the things we deal with here in the US and it's something that I think we can get better at with fitness, with focus, with mental toughness and mental acuity. And it's something that I constantly want to get better at is being able to uh, to find ways of recovering from travel really quickly. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you guys are interested in my in-season lifting programs, those are vital for my own injury prevention as well as maintaining and improving my strength and explosiveness during season. You can find those at my website, www.noacavanaugh.com. They're available there. We also have a bundle available. So on my website, you can see a little bundle. You can buy all four phases of the in-season program all at once for a discounted price. So it'll be there for you guys as well. First link down in the description box below. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. As always, be awesome. Take care. I'll see you guys in the next video.